Fancy seeing you here. All right, so now what we're going to look at, so we've looked at, so we're proving that um, that there are male characters that are unforgivably weak. I've given some excellent evidence with some embedded quotes there that show that Montpellier is weak, unforgivably so. And now we are going to move, whoop, we're going to move to my explanation. Let's talk explanation. Now, this is where I think people struggle most or lose the most points um, because they underestimate the importance of explanation. Explanation is really where the points come from. You think it comes from the evidence, but it doesn't um, because any monkey can regurgitate information. What is impressive in English is that you can not only regurgitate the information, but you can tell me the significance of it, what it actually represents, and you can analyze it, right? So here we go. So an explanation is where you explain to me what your evidence proves, okay? And you should also make reference back to your contention by using the key words to show, again, that little wave of, I'm answering the question. See how this is all relevant? It's all kind of coming together. It's all going full circle. Ooh, Illuminati, all right? <laughs> so... Every explanation should include, and these are really valuable, um, this is a really valuable little tool to remember. I know that we, we love, you know, we use so many acronyms and whatever, but this is quite a useful acronym if you're somebody who always gets on their essays, not enough depth. This isn't detailed enough. You need more depth. If you have ever read that on your essay before, these four questions will save your bacon. Okay. So, they're called wah, okay? Wah, as in what, how, author, relevant. What, how, author, relevant, okay? So the first question is, what does the evidence show? How does the evidence show this? What is the author saying by showing this? How is this relevant to your argument? What? how, author, relevant. And you use those four questions to kind of spur on your explanation to make sure you're not just writing this one sentence, one phrase, flippant explanation, that you try and answer each one of these questions in your explanation. Okay, now sometimes you don't need all four because it kind of doubles up a little bit or whatever, or you feel like you already covered that idea fine, cool, don't use all of them, but use WA as a kind of prompt for you to kind of go, have I given enough depth? Have I said what the evidence shows? Have I said how the evidence shows that? Have I said what the author's trying to say by showing me this? And have I talked about how it's relevant to the overall picture? Okay, so let's have a look at what I did. So I talked about Montpellier in the last one. And now I need to explain how this proves my point. So, <sighs> by Montpellier losing his faith so completely upon the death of his wife, he shows that his faith lacks the strength he demanded from his own congregation to retain their faith despite their hopeless situation and overwhelming grief. So that is my what does the evidence show? It shows that he lost his faith, he lacks strength, and he can't do something that he has asked everybody else to do. Okay, now the next one is, how does it show this? His declaration, there is no God, highlights the destruction of his faith in the wake of Eleanor's murder, and it is confirmed by his choice to do as he pleases by, the, by way of committing the sin of fornication with Anna. How does it show this? So I'm particularly talking about the pieces of evidence, the quotes that I've given, right? How does it show it? I break down the quotes that I've given. I break down the evidence that I gave, right? Then the next question, what is the author saying by showing this? Brooks's choice to have Montpellier fall so low is to highlight the hypocrisy of the man, to demand such unwavering faith in the face of of such horror and to make clear that despite holding himself up as a pillar as an example of a pillar of strength in the ad the face of adversity he is weak. Burn Montpellier. 
Right. So what I did there was I covered not only the author thing, but I talked about how it was relevant to my argument that I was like, you know, he is weak. You know, despite holding himself up, he is weak. You know, yes, Pompelian is weak. Okay, which ties it back to your argument. You're welcome. Very useful tool. Write these down. They could be very useful to you. If you ask me nicely, send me an email. I'll even send you a poster that I made of it. I know. I'm so cool. I know. All right. So that's the explanation. Now, let me show you how you layer and how great layering works with this. Okay. So what I've got here, sorry, just moving myself out of the way again. What I've got here is a second evidence explanation. Okay. Second evidence explanation that I will put underneath that Montpellier stuff. Got me? Okay. So now I'm going to talk about Josiah who, God help the man. He is weak if nobody is. So <laughs> Josiah is another male character that shows true weakness throughout the text. Despite the reader already establishing him as a sour, menacing creature, there I am, there I am, embedding quotes again, who loved a pot, ooh, there she goes again, Josiah sinks even lower in the reader's opinion once he takes on the position of grave digger for the town. His weakness for greed drives him to extort money out of the grieving families of Eam once he realises there is profit in the whole digging business. So again, I'm talking about what happens in the text and I'm embedding some really useful quotes. Okay, not just kind of throwaway quotes that aren't relevant. My quotes, super, super relevant. Okay, you must pick relevant quotes. If you give me loads of quotes, but they're not relevant, you're not going to get points for them. Okay, now I explain. The character decline of Josiah from gross drunkard to malicious cretin, oh, I burnt him good, demonstrates that there are always weak people in times of crisis that see others' pain as an opportunity for profit. By having Bond commit such morally egregious, egregious means like really, really, really bad, act, acts, it ensures that it is impossible for the reader to see him as anything but greedy and vile. Through Josiah, Brooks shows the reader that there are many ways to be weak and that Josiah's weakness for drink and wealth is perhaps the most despicable. Burn, Bont, burn. All right, so that is how you layer, okay? You kind of create another really nice piece that can slot in underneath your initial piece. And you can see how giving the second piece really rams home that first piece much better, okay, than if I just kind of left it at one piece of evidence. Very important to layer the evidence. The other thing that I want to just kind of side note is look how detailed my um, explanations are that I'm giving at least as much, if not more, airtime to my explanation as my evidence. Okay, I want to go back to the other one. Can I do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that was my evidence. This is my explanation. Okay, that's the weight that you should be giving it as much, if not more, than your evidence because it's worth more to us as the marker. Good tips. I will see you to talk about links. Bye.